I got one screw out. You got one screw out? What are you working on? The other fourth, or the other three. The other three? Yeah. Okay. What are you trying to do, ultimately? Here? Oh, <laughs> um, I'm trying to get the windows apart so that we can clean the panes and get the moisture out from this double pane window. Um, Why don't you hold it up for us? Let's see how it is. You can really see the moisture. Yeah, you can't really see the moisture, but yeah. Trust it's, us, it's there. It's there. They look really dirty on the inside. And then um, we're going to get the panes tinted once we get them out, and then we can put it all back together. I got a bunch of the sealant off the edges here, um, and I did get one of the four screws out on this one. I haven't even touched that one yet, but all right. it's uh, it's not budging. <laughs> So that's what Meredith is working on, y'all. We did eventually get these two frames separated, but it took each of us grabbing hold of one side and pulling apart as hard as we could to separate a gasket that had been in place for probably about 40 years. Um, at the end of the day, we didn't actually have the entire project finished, which led us into weekend two of window repair. We polished both panes of glass on both sides and then we sandwiched them together. Uh, there were two different designs for the wing window, so they both went together a little bit differently, but basically you sandwiched the two frames together and sealed it with caulk and sealant and gaskets and screws. It's complicated. I really didn't do a tutorial. Sorry. Good morning. We are having a work day today. Say hi, Jared. Hi. Um, we have a couple of our friends are already over here working. We've got several more people that are coming later today. Um, what is Scott doing? He's under the air. Hold on, I'll show you. So Scott's under the airstream right now. What's he working on, Jared? Scott is removing some screws that we have going up inside the airstream uh, through the belly pan uh, related to where the P-trap used to be. And then we've got Wayne working on polishing the spots where the Airstream letters go because we have to put those letters back up so that we can attach them from inside the trailer before we put up the insulation. So we're not putting the cart before the horse. We're not doing the aesthetic before we do the functional, but that has to happen. So that's what's happening today. So we are on weekend three of the window repair and we're almost done. Uh, let me show you real quick. Got the screws in on this side, but on this side, the original screws had to be drilled out, and so the, the screws aren't really gripping the way we were hoping. So instead, we're gonna use, sorry, I got cut off by the saw. Um, we're gonna use this Loctite Power Grab Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive to uh, seal that seam together, and then <laughs> we're gonna slap it in and rivet it into the Airstream shell before it has a chance to pop apart. Well, that's the plan. Spoiler alert, this did not work. We ended up having to put screws in anyway, and with the addition of the caulk, it did sort of hold, at least long enough for us to get up, up in the frame of the Airstream. I wanna give a huge shout out to the people that helped us on that work day. That was Trent and Jacob and Stephanie and Scott and Steven. Because of all the work you guys put in, we were able to get so much done that we can move on to the next step, which is insulation. All right, so right now, this is my dad working with me on insulation. And we're putting foam insulation up. And this is the problem that you run into with foam insulation in a curve on the Airstream. Easy down below, not so easy when you get up higher where you have all the curves. So we're gonna show you how we came up with to work on that problem. So here's our board right here. And what I'm gonna do is, could you hand me my knife please? I'm just gonna put some slices in it. You don't have to be too precise. Just make sure they're going in the correct direction. Alright, 
So now what we're gonna do is just carefully kind of snap each of those, which is probably how you cut the insulation anyways, by snapping it like this. And the aluminum, thin layer of aluminum holds it together. Yeah, so it's Doesn't got aluminum on those sides. So he's just gonna fit test it real quick. And we'll make sure that it holds up there fine. It's too long. <laughs> Here's one of the friends that we found working out here today. We're gonna move that. Him. Yeah, we're gonna move him to the backyard. Is a big walking stick. Pretty cool looking. Pretty good size. Maybe he'll walk up onto that. We'll be able to see him a little better. There he goes. Over three inches. Over three inches long. Nice. Probably four inches by the time you measure his back legs. These guys are awesome. Be a lot. Jared is now scoring the foam board and then applying adhesive. Then he and his dad are pressing it up into the curve of the Airstream. And that adhesive is that same Loctite construction grade adhesive that I was using earlier on the window. And for this application, it actually works. Alright, so here we are at the end of the day. We got a lot of work done today. You can see the insulation now on the front side, all the way down to the floor. Looks pretty good. I just have a few places to just kind of fill in tomorrow. Still the places where I need the rivets. Uh, they're here, but I need to just put those in. But I really wanted to get this done today. Check that out. Good morning. It is a brisk 54 degrees in Houston, Texas, which doesn't happen very often. Um, it's also about 70% humidity and yes. that's going to be dropping over the next few hours. So we're really excited. This is like the perfect work day to get some stuff done on the Airstream. Um, we still need to do a second coat of paint on the frame on the inside. We're going to try to get the front window assembly back up so that we can take down that ugly tarp <laughs> that's been up there since we got it um, and if we have some time maybe do some patches in the belly pan wait for those of you who are laughing at us for being excited about 73 percent humidity yesterday we started out the day at 100 percent 73 percent is amazing we're making progress i mean yes. it's all it's all about progress so i don't know how much i've explained about how big a pain these windows have been but the front window is like one main rectangular window and then there's these two curved windows on either side and the two curved windows you think would be pretty much the same design just reversed um, but I think one of ours had been replaced at some point in time and so they're like totally different designs so we had to basically figure that out twice um, one of them we have completely repaired and I'll show you that so it's a double pane window and each pane of the window on this design had its own metal sash. So this is the, the top pane and that's its sash. And then this is the bottom, bottom pane and its sash. And so with this one, you can see it's pretty low tech. You just kind of smush the two together. So this top pane kind of sinks into the sash for the bottom frame and then this is actually not part of the original design, but the person before us had done this. They drilled holes through both sashes and put screws in, which I think was a great addition because I honestly don't know how you secure them together other than caulk if you don't do that. And this thing that we've MacGyvered over here um, is the single sash window. So in this case, this is just one sash that contains both panes of glass. So we took the sash off, separated the two panes, cleaned them, um, polished them, resealed them so the two glass panes just back together and then you slide both panes together back into the sash and seal the sash up. The problem that we had was these two screws on the original had to be drilled out because they were just cemented in place. We couldn't get them out and so then that became challenging to put it back together 
so what we ended up having to do was clamp them together. We shot caulk down into the screw holes and then um, Jared just screwed them in um, with caulk on the screws as well. So fingers crossed that that holds. The hope is that once all of these things are back in place on the Airstream and riveted to the frame of the Airstream, that was embarrassing, I just hit the brim of my cap. Um, but anyway, <laughs> once we rivet them into the frame of the Airstream, that structure will hold everything in place a little bit where it's weak. So we just really don't want to replace the windows. It's like three or $400 a pop. So if we can make the old ones last, at least for a little while, that's going to save us a lot of money. Now, in my experience, the gasket is not exactly the most useful uh, thing to use here. I would definitely recommend just using some thick caulk. Uh, in place of the gasket. The reason for that is because, okay, so you have to drill through the gasket in order to put the rivet in. So when you do that, you basically mess up the seal of the gasket. And part of the process of drilling through it or getting through that gasket, sometimes you wind up uh, twisting it, breaking it. It's really just not the most effective way to do this. And we wound up having to seal it up with caulk anyways afterwards. So I would just do that in the future. first while we got it anchored but now that it's pretty securely in place we're about to just blaze through all of those go for it I know I know again with the gratuitous footage I just find this riveting. I'll see myself out. It ended up taking all three of us, but we did eventually get the center window in place and finally the front window project was done. They are finally in. Oh goodness, this was a nightmare. We used some um, aluminum colored caulk that just ran like crazy and so we had to take it all off and then we put this clear caulk on which if you look closely doesn't look great but who's gonna be that close up on it I mean I think from a distance it looks fine um, you can see there's plastic up behind all the windows which need to be washed pretty dusty uh, because Jared did get a second coat of paint on the frame so that is Good to go. We don't have to do any more work on the frame now. Uh, so, all in all, a good day. Um, the rivets, as you can see, will still need to be shaved down. That's just the nature of them. But we'll do that at the end, once we've got them all in. This one was a long one, so if you've made it this far, your reward is an uninterrupted clip of Jared's setting rivets. Have a satisfying day.